Hey guys, it's Monday. 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 Yeah, it's Monday. It's a good day. It's actually fairly cool outside. I was just outside in my favorite purple shirt and my shorts, and I was actually a little bit cold. But I think I'll warm up when I go out in the sunshine. I was on the deck, so it's a little bit cold. I'm coming to you a little late today. Um, Mr. Larry was on a call, and he needed my help with something, so I didn't quite get on it all the way. Um, Monday, June. Yeah, we turned a new month. June 1st. June number one. That's an easy one, a straight line. And we count one, June one. A straight line is lots of fun. That's the way to make a one. Okay, you guys are pretty smart. You know that. All right, well, let's get to it. Couple of things I want to talk to you about. Number one, um, I was watching a movie. No, I wasn't watching a movie. I was watching the news seemed like a movie, but I was watching the news. And right now in the world, we have a lot of things going on. And it really disturbed me a lot to watch the news. I'm very sad and I'm very angry at some people. Um, but I want you to know that just because you don't share the same idea as somebody else, or you don't share the same color skin, or the same language, we need to love other people. Now, when people are doing things wrong that are bad, then we need to step back and take a look at ourselves, because you know what? We all do bad things. We really do. But here's the point I want to make. I'm seeing a lot of hatred in the world right now. And, and that makes me very sad because I don't want to hate people. I want to love people. I want to have a happy life. And I'm sure you guys do too. So just remember that the next time you don't get along with somebody, just try to be nice with that person because, you know, they're a person too. God loves them just as much as God loves you. So, you know, just be nice. Yes, yeah, some people are bad people, but stay away from those people. Don't follow what they do. If you know what's right in your head, then do what's right in your head. Okay, enough said. We have been talking last week about sentences. And if you'll remember, a sentence begins with an uppercase letter and it has words and it has spaces in between the words and it ends with punctuation. So here's my sentence for the day today. The sun is out. I continued my sentence on the second line. Okay. The sun is out. Now, is that a sentence? Well, let's see. Let's check. It has an uppercase letter, right? Uppercase T. It does have words. It has spaces in between the words, and it has a punctuation mark. Now, in this case, I put in a question mark. So that would be red. The sun is out. Okay, but we can also, instead of a question mark, we can just put a period. The sun is out. Or we can put an exclamation or an excited mark. The sun is out. Okay, I like this one the best. The sun is out. I'm happy that the sun is out. So that's a good thing. So it does have an uppercase T right there. It has words, one, two, three, four words. It has spaces in between the words, and it has that punctuation at the end. Oh, and it is one complete thought. 
Mm -hmm. So there you go. It has a set. We have a sentence. All right. We're going to work with that still some more. Now, I have um, a book to read. You know, I always do. This book is by Jan Brett, and it's called Hedgie's Surprise. Now, we have seen Hedgie before. We saw Hedgie in the hat. Remember? The hedgehog that got the sock stuck on his head, and he thought it was a hat. Yeah. So that's who we have here. Hedgie. Hedgie's Surprise. And what's that? A chicken. I just talked to Miss Des on the phone. She has 12 little chicklets at her house that are getting a brand new chicken coop. So that's exciting. Hedgie's surprise. I'm thinking that's a little hen house, but I could be very wrong. Now remember, Jan Brett is known for her beautiful borders and beautiful pictures. And very often time, she puts something in those borders that tells us what's going to happen. Now, I don't know if that happens in this book or not, because it's been a long time since I've read this book. But here we are. Here's some people there. They don't look like they're very happy people. And the cat. Once there was a speckled hen who laid an egg every day, only to have it taken by a little tom ten every morning. It all started because the tom ten got tired of the porridge for breakfast. Porridge is like oatmeal. So there's the speckled hen. I'm assuming these are tom tens. Each morning. The rooster crowed as the sun came up, and Henny knew that the Tom Ten was on his way. So did the little hedgehog who lived near by. There's the hedgehog. The Tom Ten always called out to her, Henny, have you got a little yummy for my hungry, hungry tummy? Well, let's hope so. Otherwise, he might go hungry. The Tom Ten climbed into the hen house, took Henny's warm, smooth egg, and ran off to cook it in his kettle. Okay, so there he is. There's the hen house. There's Tom Ten with the egg. And if we look over here, who do we see? Hedgy. And here is the kettle. He sprinkled it with a little salt and gobbled it down, and then he fell fast asleep in the hayloft until evening. Henny didn't like the Tom Ten taking her eggs, but she put up with it until one morning when she saw Goosey Goosey sail forth, smiling and bowing, with a stream of piping goslings following her. Goslings are baby geese. So there's the goose. There are the goslings. And here's Henny. And over here, you can see Hedgie. And here's the Tom Ten fast asleep. Oh my, Henny clucked, where did all those little ones come from? My eggs are hatching, said Goosey. Goosey, Goosey, here comes the last one now. From that moment on, Henny wanted a brood of peeping chicks chicks of her own. But how could she stop the Tom Ten from taking her eggs? I don't know, but these guys remind me. I was out walking with the girls the other day, and the duck couple on, on the duck pond near here had babies. I saw the mommy duck and some of the babies, the duck, pardon me, ducklings, 
We also have had geese, but I've never seen goslings. But the ducks were out the other day, and so were the bullfrogs. Okay. So there you go. Now, the next morning when the Tom Ten poked his head in, Henny tried. She clucked so loudly and pecked. She flew at him, but nothing stopped that hungry Tom Ten from taking her egg again. Oh, he got it. No eggs, no chicks, no peeping babies. Oh, Henny looks very sad. Henny wailed so loudly that she woke up the little hedgehog, her tears pouring down on top of him. Puffa, puffa, stick, stick, Hedgy went as he crawled out to talk to her. Poor Henny, I've been watching the Tom Ten take your eggs. I'll help you trick him into stopping. I wonder how. All right. The next morning when the rooster crowed, there was the tom pen. There he was. But little Hedgy is up to something. Henny, have you got a little yummy from my nearly empty tummy? Henny and Henny. Henny and Hedgy were ready. The Tonten reached for the egg and pulled out an acorn. Hmm, said Tonten, what's this? And off he went to try it. The acorn was tasty, but it didn't fill him up, and he awoke in the middle of the afternoon grumpy. He didn't get to sleep all day because his tummy wasn't full. Well, the next time Tom Ten, Tom Ten arrived looking for an egg, he found a bright red strawberry, which would be good, unless you're allergic to them like I am. It looked bigger than the acorn, so he ran off to cook it. The strawberry was jammy and sweet, but it only filled up the Tom Ten a little more than the acorn had and he woke up early. And you know what? He didn't even need to cook that strawberry. Didn't even need to. Wonderful. See, he woke up there. He's up in the hayloft and he woke up. The sun had just come up when the Tom Ten was at the hen house again. Now here's Hedgy rolling something his stomach roaring with hunger. Pushing Henny aside, he grabbed for an egg, only to find a delicious smelling mushroom. He raced off to cook it, and as scrumptious as it was, he woke up with his little tummy growling for more. Now, I want you to know that not all um, Mushrooms are good for you. Some mushrooms can be poisonous and make you very, very sick. So if you find mushrooms, please, please, please don't eat them. Get them from the grocery store. Or if you know somebody like, um, I know a couple of people that know what morel mushrooms look like, or um, what are they called? Brickle, butter, butter brickles? dinner plate, mushrooms, but only if they absolutely know. And don't eat them raw. Okay? Cock-a-doodle-doo. Hedgie's rolling something. The Tom Ten rushed in even before the rooster finished crowing. Henny, you've got to have something for my hollow, hollow tummy. And this time, he found a smooth, round potato, even bigger than an egg. He cooked it quickly, swallowed it down, and went back to his hayloft. He looks like he liked that. He woke up at sunset, only half full. 
the Tom Ten had had enough. Henny, he shouted, tomorrow I want an egg for breakfast and nothing else. If I don't find one, I'll eat you up instead. Uh-oh. Chicken stew for dinner, maybe, tomorrow night. Henny was scared. The Tom Ten had been tricked by an acorn, a strawberry, a mushroom, and a potato. How could they fool him again? Don't worry, Henny, Hedgie told her. Now it is time for my surprise. And he whispered in her ear. Look, she's sitting on top of Hedgie. All night, Henny waited on her nest, nest and Hedgie on his. As soon as it began to get light, Hedgie gently covered his nest with straw and got ready for the surprise. Here's the Tom Ten coming in. Henny and Hedgie could hear the Tom Ten's stomach rumbling like thunder a mile away. He burst into the hen house, pushed Henny aside, and grabbed. Ow! He howled. Ow! Ow! Puff a puff a stick stick. He had clutched Hedgie all closed up in a tight round ball of needle sharp prickles. Hedgehogs have prickles. You have to handle them very, very carefully. Henny and Hedgie listened as the Tom Ten ran home yowling. Thank you, Hedgie, Henny said, looking at her dear friend. I'm sure that the Tom, -tom, Tom Ten won't be back here again for breakfast. But what I can't figure out is where you have hidden my eggs. Where do you think... The Hedgie has hidden the eggs. Just then, Henny heard a little peep, then another, coming from Hedgie's nest. She looked over and saw the straw begin to move. Five baby chicks peeked out of their shells and fluffed up their down, their down or their feathers. As Henny settled down with her babies nestled around her, the Tom Ten's mother was in the hayloft making breakfast for her hungry Tom Ten, who looks happy. And there's all those babies. One, two, three, four, five little chickens. Chicklets, I like to call them. Hedgie, 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 you are full of surprises, Henny cried as she led her baby chicks out into the sunshine. But the little Tom Ten didn't hear a word. He was sound asleep, his tummy full of tasty porridge. So, what did we learn from that book? We learned that friends should help other friends and that being mean to people doesn't help things, right? Yeah. And in the end, the Tom Ten realized that he liked porridge more than he thought he did. And um, Henny got herself five baby chickens, which when you get baby chickens like that, what does that mean? More eggs! You got it! So that's a cool thing. So friends helping friends. And that's the gist of what I want you to take away from this story today. We help each other. We don't hurt each other. And by hurting each other, that can mean calling people names. It can mean breaking things on them. It can mean just not being a friend, being nasty to them. So I want you to be a friend to other people and stay away from people that are mean from you and don't do what they say. Be nice, okay? I will see you tomorrow, although I don't know what time because remember I told you I'm having surgery on my wrist tomorrow and my surgery is supposed to be at 11 o'clock and I don't know how awake I'm going to be so it might not be until evening. But in the meantime, make it a great Monday, okay? I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye.